Okay, I'll go ahead and call the budget committee <clears throat> to order. We do have um, some minutes from December the 10th. Entertain a motion to approve. So moved. We have a motion. Do we have a second? Second. I have a motion and a second to approve the minutes. All in favor say aye. Aye. Oppose same sign. And Aaron, if you'll tell them at home, they'll have to unmute or you can unmute them either one. I'm sorry to interrupt. I can't hear you. You'll talk into your mic. Got to help her hear. And he's going to unmute Commissioner Glover and Commissioner Stafford. Or they'll have to unmute themselves, won't they? Yes, sir. Okay, you just got them there because that's where I don't have it, I can't. Commissioner Glover, can you hear me? Commissioner Glover, can you hear me? Commissioner Glover, can you hear me? Okay. Got a thumbs up then. Okay. And, uh, Commissioner Stafford, can you hear me? Yes, sir, I can hear you now. Okay. Commissioner Glover, will you unmute, please? Thank you. I can hear you. Thank you. Okay. Just leave yours unmuted and we'll leave those two unmuted when we're ready to go to work. Okay, um, director's report. Okay. Apparently, I can't have a mic at my desk, so <laughs> <laughs> it was like the mayor's afraid I might say something. Go figure. <laughs> Uh, I want to yield most of my time to uh, ClearGov tonight, which is a budgeting solution that I would like for you guys to take a look at and consider. Uh, so your revenue report is in there. I always like to start with that these days. So there's just a few things on your revenue report I'd like to point out. Uh, you are in current property tax. You've collected $348,735 and change more through December 20 than you did through December of 19, including another $118,212.62 more in trustee collections from the prior year. So overall on property tax collections, December through December, you're up $466,948. Hotel motel tax, no surprise, that is down in the general fund, 148,000. Uh, really good from our elected officials. The county clerk has turned in 106,500 more than he did same time last year. The register of deeds, uh, 200, almost 277,000 more than she did same time last year. Uh, the trustee, 172,500 more than the same time last year, and the clerk and master, 10,000 more than the same time last year. And contracted prisoner boarding is uh, down some, which would uh, just mean that we have fewer state inmates than we've had in the past years, which uh, given our crowding situation in the jail, that's not at all a bad thing. Um, Sales tax, uh, December to December, we are 390, in the uh, special purpose tax fund, we're $394,000 ahead of where we were. Um, flipping over a few pages to the Ag Center, again, you're going to see that hotel motel tax is down, uh, $209,000. But uh, most of our other revenues are trending in a pretty positive direction with the exception of that surcharge host agency and the reason that's so far off is because of the fare. That's the biggest number that goes in there is the dollar ticket surcharge from the fare. Uh, nothing else on here that I particularly wanted to point out looking at your actual finance report. Um, You've received 54.76% of your budgeted re revenues in the general fund. Uh, you've spent 46% uh, in a small percentage. Uh, so 
you're trending in a very positive direction. Uh, looking at um, looking over on page seven at your your adequate facilities tax, you're at 51.87 percent of what you budgeted. So we're right on track with what we budgeted thus far. So everything looks very positive to me, and I'm going to turn it over to Ryan Wilson from ClearGov and. It's just something that I want you guys to consider, and uh, we've had several conversations lately. So, um, Aaron, whenever you're ready to bring Ryan on. Yeah, thank you so much, Aaron, uh, for the introduction. Um, yeah, I I'm going to go ahead and share my screen here, make sure everybody can see this, okay? But my goal here today, basically, I've been uh, in, in conversations with Aaron and, and also was able to talk a little bit with. Uh, Commissioner Breeze, um, but walk you through uh, what ClearGov is all about uh, at a very high level. And then if you guys have questions beyond that uh, at the end here, be able to answer anything you have there. But, you know, basically, uh, as I was, uh, you know, speaking with Aaron um, a, a few months ago when we first kind of spoke, he mentioned, look, um, a lot of the processes uh, in place at Wilson County uh, you know, having to use Excel or, or Word and uh, a lot of these outdated uh, processes for the budget and could be could be very much improved upon. So when I was able to walk him through this, he was very excited and, and excited to show you guys as the budget committee today how this is going to benefit both the finance team in building a budget, but also how this is going to benefit your residents and what they see as far as transparency is concerned. Um, so I just want to ensure, uh, can you guys hear me okay? Mm -hmm. Everything good? Yes, sir. All right, excellent. Great, so just a little bit of background as to ClearGov, and then I'll get right into showing you, you know, what we built here. Um, we've really heard from governments um, that it, modernization right now uh, is a must. Um, this was already kind of a, a key trend we saw uh, within local municipalities, um, but especially with coronavirus uh, making a lot of people having to work from home, needing to kind of collaborate in one space, and also needing to communicate to the public when a lot of the public might not be coming to in-person meetings. Um, so we kind of saw some, some key ways that we're doing this, whether it be through security, collaboration, communication, uh, and, and really seeing this trend in, in modernization ClearGov wanted to come in into play and, and provide what we call just right software, and, and we're built specifically for local governments, and we're in the we're in the the business of what we call uh, budget cycle management, right? So we're helping um, the finance team and your budget committee build the budget, communicate the budget, uh, and be able to see it as it's being worked on. But across the board, easy to implement. We can work with Skyward, um, easy to afford. Uh, easy to use and, and easy to understand both internally and for your residents. So specifically, you know, what you guys would be working with, uh, with ClearGov, uh, this is, it's listed here. Um, we break it up into three different solution suites, if you will, um, that, that take on different parts of this kind of budgeting process. First in the orange is the budget building aspect. Uh, that's putting together the operational budget committee members being able to see it as it's worked on in one kind of online place and making it easier for Aaron and his team to come in, invite department heads, and make changes to the budget. Uh, in the blue here, this is our uh, budget book and capital request tool. This is gonna be able to help you guys better uh, make your capital request process more efficient. And also the budget document that you're currently creating. Uh, this is what I found online under the commissioner budget uh, this takes a long time to build. Um, I'm sure Aaron could to, uh, attest to that. But basically, being able to take a, a document that's currently being built through Word and Excel, these charts and graphs that you're putting in here, uh, putting it into a, a much more reader-friendly um, environment, and also making it easier to put together uh, for the finance team. And finally, something that can help with tr financial transparency. Uh, Aaron mentioned to me that uh, one of the budget committee's goals uh, is uh, helping the residents understciand when you guys are up certain in revenues or you spend money exiting. in one place and not another place, 
instead of just putting the numbers out there, providing context so people can understand what that means. And that's what we do with this financial transparency profile, which is <laughs> going to be a website that attaches to y'all site. And it's a way for residents to interact with the budget and help better understand. But uh, with that, there's ways to communicate capital uh, projects and project communications. <coughs> and also different department, uh, department KPIs, key performance indicators, things like that. <laughs> so I'll get right into it here um, and start showing you this budget document that y'all are producing. We're going to be able to take it from here. And, and I got one of our uh, current <laughs> clients examples pulled up, but we're looking to take the current way of, of showing it in a PDF format, which to the average resident um, can be daunting to see a, a you know several hundred page document. They don't quite understand where to go for certain information or what certain things mean. Uh, also, it, you know, if you're uploading a PDF, every time you guys make a budget amendment, you have to re-upload that PDF online. So we're, we're actually creating a web-based way of showing um, your budget book. And so residents who go onto your website and look at the budget can come through and see exactly what they might be interested in seeing. So in this example, if, if I was a resident and I saw this budget book, this is Yuma County, right? Um, I can come over and say, all right, well, I'm interested in looking at the general fund. So you see there's different drop downs to go exactly to what you might be interested in. And then residents who are taking a look at it, see this information. Um, like I said, in interactive format. So as, as I look at this historical budget to actual information, highlighting over the numbers lets me know kind of uh, what those numbers were. A resident's able to see it in different pie charts and graphs. And this entire document here will be automated through our software, where all the finance team has to do is input this narrative and things of that nature. But even as a resident, they can come in and say, all right, well, I'm interested in looking at the numbers in different formats and different ways. So there's different options for that. Even, you know, you could take out portions of this chart and see how it might update the graph. And then that spreadsheet breakdown that you're currently displaying in your budget document, that's definitely going to be here as well. And you can show, you know, however many years you can customize how you want to show this, right? But kind of the goal here is to be able to display the budget in a way that makes sense to the average resident. Um, Beyond this, you can also print this to PDF if you still do want that uh, printed document, right? So anybody who, who wants to can come over here to print to PDF, and it's going to generate a PDF document as well that has a pre-linkable table of contents, taking you exactly where you want to go, but basically taking that online document and putting it into a PDF if you want to do that as well. So that's the, the ultimate kind of building into the budget book. The way we get this information in, you can actually go in uh, to ClearGov in the back office and Aaron and his finance team uh, can log into one place and work on the budget from this one uh, kind of central hub, uh, if you will. So as they're going through and making changes, uh, right now, a lot of that is being done through Excel. Uh, and this is a way for you to come in and say, okay, uh, I have this um, metrics bar. So this is a internal usage to build the operating budget, but this is telling me, okay, do we have a projected surplus or deficit as we as we work on the budget this year? And then department heads and the finance team can look at the different line items, the different categories as they work on the budget and visually see how they have done actual budget to actual information, right? So I can see if I've consistently been under budget Maybe I need to uh, budget more in that section, or if I've been consistently over budget, maybe I need to make a change as well. But kind of the goal here is, look, all of the formulas are built into it. There's nothing that can break, and it's going to save uh, Aaron and his staff a whole lot of time. I also want to point out, if you're coming in here and, and uh, you want the budget committee to have access to this, um, you, we actually can give you guys read-only access so that you can see the budget as it's being created but not necessarily make changes yourself so that you're able to see this as it's being um, produced. But as far as making changes go, I just want to quickly point out everything's built in, right? So I can change a percentage. That's going to change the dollar amount. If I come in and change the dollar amount, it'll then impact the percentage and build up to the top. So um, really kind of a, a really user-friendly aspect here. And then I can add attachments 
to this line item or to this spreadsheet here within ClearGov. So everything's in one place. You're not having to look for different documents in different places. And for your department heads that want to come in and provide justification to the numbers, there's actually a way to break down the sub line item. Um, so let's say I just did salary one, put in the, the cost. It's going to total out this line item here and tell me what the difference is until I make that up. So you have the ability to, to provide justification and a little bit more color around the, the lines here uh, within this budgeting tool. Um, so that's kind of a, a, a quick overview of that. There's also ways to build out forecasts. So you can see multiple years in advance what, um, you know, a, a forecast that's got different algorithms that, um, you know, a lot of governments are using. And you can kind of see, okay, well, what does this algorithm think, you know, in future years uh, will be? And you can actually change, you can edit that forecast if you know that there's going to be an increase or a decrease based on something that it's not seeing. So really kind of giving you some artificial intelligence to, to better uh, make those decisions for the budget. The last thing I'll show you is this capital request tool. Um, basically, uh, what Aaron had kind of mentioned to me is, uh, you know, there was a desire to make this uh, capital request process uh, a little bit more uh, formalized. So what you're able to do is send out requests within the tool to the you know public works director or, or different department heads that need to come in and make capital requests. And then there's gonna be a dashboard um, for the finance team to see here of the next, let's say you do a five year plan, right? You're able to see the next five years of what's being requested, broken down by department. You can break it down by funding source and really be able to, to tell kind of what these requests are and break them down even on a, a a more detailed level where you have images, pictures, a description of each request, and then even the ability to automate all of this information into that final budget book document to show your residents. But that's how the capital request tool works. That's kind of more of a back office tool as well. The last thing I'll walk you through is uh, when I talk about providing context and that transparency, um, we'll offer a, a transparency kind of website that um, when you go on to wilsoncounty.com, uh, you know, if I'm over here, you'll have a banner on your website that says Transparency Center. To learn more about the budget, click here. And as you go there, uh, here's an example of, uh, this is Cass County, Missouri, but here's an example of, they're able to, a resident who comes to this hub, to this website, is able to see revenues versus expenses, mm -hmm. And it's in a way that makes sense for, for the average person. And you can even provide that commentary or context around the numbers by putting in some, some notes or commentary here so people can get a better understanding if they see you know, expenses going up or down, why that would be. And then if they're interested, they can even break down the expenditures or revenues further. See these are different charts and graphs. And really what we like to tell people is look, you can be as detailed or not detailed as you want with this. You can keep it really high level, or you can kind of um, you can drill down to the numbers if that's something you want to include on this transparency site. Uh, finally, there's a way to communicate these capital projects that I mentioned before. So you can see here, there's a few capital projects that this county has been working on. You can see that they show that they've been completed, but instead of having people you know calling in asking questions uh, about hey when is this road work going to be complete. Um, or when is this um, building going to be complete that y'all might be working on? You're able to display that in a really easy to read format. And then residents can subscribe via project uh, updates via email and they'll be updated anytime a change is made to something like this. But that's ClearGov in a nutshell. I wanted to kind of really keep this high level and leave some space at the end uh, if you guys had questions. What kind of training uh, and how long do you anticipate for someone to be able to operate this? Yeah, that's a really good question. It's a little muffled, so I want to make sure I got your question right. Uh, what I heard was, what kind of training do we provide? Um, we offer unlimited training, unlimited support. Uh, the finance team, um, they're actually going to have one single point of contact that can work with them through the process. And if they need to schedule trainings for the departments, the department heads, 
they need to schedule a training for the finance team, they can do that. Um, we also offer, you know, uh, videos and, um, you know, help desk articles uh, in the back office. Um, but we don't charge anything extra for those trainings to call in, to email in, anything like that. Thank you. Any other questions? Aaron, are you through with your report? I am. I, I will, if anybody has any questions uh, about this, not for Ryan, if they want to ask me any questions, I'm more than happy to answer. Uh, if y'all are finished with Ryan, he can disconnect the phone by the Okay. Any other questions for Ryan before we dismiss him? Miss Sue? Is there a cost? Do we know the cost involved in it? <laughs> Ryan, did you hear the question there about the cost? Uh, it, uh, it was asking about the cost. There's quite a bit of an echo. So the cost for, for Yas County would be thirty-five thousand annually. Tell him we can't understand him. We can't hear him. Someone's mic. Yeah. Someone's mic. Yeah. Someone's mic. Yeah. Someone's mic. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Um, Aaron Wilson, do you mind typing in? If there's a question that comes in, could you type it in? Because uh, I'm not able to hear. The question, Ryan, was, is there a cost to this? Right, there, there is a cost to it. It's 35000 annually. 35000 annually. Other questions? Other questions? Okay. Ryan, thank you for the presentation, and uh, we will uh, discuss this a little bit later. Talk with Mr. Maynard, and uh, I'm sure Mr. Maynard will get back with you at some point. All right, thank you all very much. Yes, sir. Okay. Thank you. <clears throat> and your report is done, Mr. Mayor. Commissioner Marlow. Okay, do I have a motion to approve the report? So move. So moved. We have a motion and a second. All in favor say aye. 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 Aaron, you want me to do this or you uh, want to? Either way, sir. Uh, <laughs> Robert here is Robert's here for questions. If you have any questions for him. Yeah. Uh, basically, this is for the uh, installation of UV lights in the courtrooms and judges' offices uh, to combat uh, COVID as well as other <laughs> viruses. Uh, UV lights are being installed in hospitals, et cetera, to, to help combat. COVID in particular. Are these funds coming out of COVID money? COVID money has all already been filed for and received. So really, uh, well, not, not received. It's been filed for. So this is not part of the COVID program. Uh, but if you want to look at it as taking some of the $2.1 million that you received and applying it toward the UV lighting, then you can look at it that way. Did we did we have any type of professional to verify the usefulness of doing this? That I would have to defer to Robert. Robert, I think the back mic is on. If you can use it. Well, it basically. <laughs> there we go. Now I'm live. We uh. We took, uh, back in the beginning of the year, we had seven uh, lights we ordered. We put six of those in the health department, um, which have, we've had really good success with those. We have also have one in the employee clinic uh, on those units there. Based on um, talking with my HVAC person, he's been seeing these since 1990 in hospitals around uh, this area and around the country. Uh, so with that said, uh, we took it uh, from that standpoint and thought it would be something good to do. Uh, the, the health department director was also in, uh, was glad to receive these in their medical side. Uh, that's where we put the six in at uh, the health department and then uh, so they went in the employee clinic to cover those units there. Well, I could see the need for, I understand those two places that you mentioned. I understand that a lot, but the, um, why, why the courtroom and the judge's office before anybody else's office. 
But after they had a meeting, they were requesting requ requesting some of that information and, and to have those installed. We are investigating all of our county buildings. Uh, the Public Works Committee asked me to investigate the other buildings. We have limited supply right now on the light, so we've got to get some, some more in. But we're, we're going to investigate the cost of that. Um, the cost varies per unit size. Commercial units run a little bit more than, than residential size units. Um, so we're investigating that right now, and I should have a number, hopefully within the next uh, couple of weeks, on that to, uh, to present back in February. <clears throat> Can I ask a question? Yes, sir. Are Mr. these Gentry? lights to be run at night only, or during the day, or 24 hours a day? The, the lights are installed inside the HVC system, so there's no threat to the the people, you know, with with burns or eye eye problems or anything like that. They're inside. The HV system. Okay. Because well, I've seen some robotic eyes in, in hospitals on TV doing the same thing, but they come in during the night and, and they do the rooms. Right. This is not the same thing. No, that's not the same thing. Okay, gotcha. Again, just saying for my people at home, if you have background noise, that's why we mute you from time to time, so you have to unmute to talk. And then everybody in here, if you could talk in the mics, they're saying at home they're having a hard time understanding y'all's questions. Did this come through the Judicial Committee? Public Works. Public Works. Monday night. Okay. And at Public Works, uh, they voted to move forward with this three to two. Uh, and the only conversation was exactly what you brought up. Uh, they wanted him to go back and see about what about the rest of our buildings and see about getting those done. So I'd love to make a motion in first 30 days till we get that figure. Okay, there's a motion to defer for 30 days. Commissioner Glover asked what the cost was. Almost $15,000. Fourteen thousand nine sixty one is the cost for what we what is being asked for right now. Yep. And we have how much in that fund to spend? Capital projects. Uh, I'm going to give you an actual cash balance. Five point nine million is what's sitting in cash today. This is, it, this is, oh, is this general fund. Oh, I'm sorry, general fund. I won't give you an actual cash balance. <laughs> it's, nine, it's nine million. Uh, I've got it in my folder. And and really, I was going back to the nine point eight set aside. The fund that we have set aside with COVID dollars in it. I thought that was around 90000 Am I wrong? No, no. There is nope. no fund set aside with COVID dollars. In gotcha. It. Okay. In the general fund. All the money that has been applied for uh, has <clears throat> not been received, but it will all come back into the general fund, a total of 2633000 of which we spent on other projects. There is no uh, other fund for COVID, but each COVID grant is being accounted for in a separate place within the general fund, so you can track the revenues and expenditures come out at time of, of the COVID grants. Okay. So I'll go back, and, and Robert, in our conversation, we said that we had applied for money to be reimbursed on. We applied for more than what we could get. Okay. Uh, and we got all that we could get. Uh, I was thinking when you talked to me, there was so much of it had been spent, and there was so much still left out to spend. Uh, on things that you had projected to do. Am I wrong on that? Right now we received uh almost nine thousand dollars right now. And you said the other is the one million. Gotcha. Okay. Thank you. This is all for a second. Second. We have a motion and a second. Any further discussion or comments? <coughs> all in favor to uh, delay for 30 days, say aye. 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 Opposed, same sign. I'd like to ask a question to make sure it's deferred to count. Is that correct? Yes, budget committee meeting. That, that is correct. Yes. That's on both. Just on the first one. First one. And, and really the conversation, Commissioner Stafford, that came up was simply let's 
you know, can we treat them all at one time? That's kind of, I think that was the deal. Hard to say we're going to do one for one and not do everybody else's. And that, that's really the only concern here. So he'll get, a, he'll get a figure in 30 days and come back and give it to you, which is fine with, with, with as far as that's I'm concerned. Somewhere. Does that make mm -hmm. sense for you? Okay, did you understand me though? Okay. Mr. Stafford, did you understand what I said? <laughs> well, the, there was three votes approving the uh, motion. Uh, I voted yes. So there's four, and but I don't know what Annette voted. And Commissioner Stafford, can you hear me? Commissioner Stafford, can you hear? Okay. Okay. How do you vote on deferring for 30 days for Robert to come back with a total figure for everybody? That's on the 14,961. That is correct. No. Yes. Yes. It is? Yeah. Yes. So we'll defer for 30 days. Uh, was what the motion was, and we'll bring it back to you. Yes. Okay. All right. Okay. Do you have two devices on at home, Ms. Stafford, or just one? Just one. Okay. All right. You sound good to us. We hear some feedback occasionally, but you sound good to us. So I'm not for sure why we don't sound good to you, but we'll keep Aaron's working on it. Go ahead, Commissioner Marlowe. Okay. The next. Okay, Aaron, the next county buildings amendment. Uh, $66,779 is what's needed to finish the Mount Juliet clerk's office. Again, if you have specific questions about what those needs are, I again defer to uh, Mr. Baines. I know some of it is parking lot, I believe. Yes, parking lot. Yeah. Second. Second. We have a motion and a second to approve. All in favor say aye. Ah. Uh, yeah. uh, spoke with. I'm sorry. There we go. <laughs> now we got them all. <laughs> I'm sorry. I spoke with uh, Jeff Dixon over in Drug Court. Uh, obviously, people are not traveling much this year, and he's running short in his rental line. Uh, and so he requested to move money from his travel line, which he's not using, over into the, the rentals. Second. Okay, we have a motion and a second to approve the uh, transfer of funds. All in favor say aye. 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 That's unanimous. The uh, new microphone system in the commission room, we had a very small overage over what was brought to you before, $470. Motion to approve. Second. I have a motion and a second to approve the uh, $470 expenditure. All in favor say aye. 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 Any opposed? That's unanimous. <laughs> From the uh, judicial commissioners, there was a uh, a motion or a passed out of the uh, judicial committee to raise the pay for what I'm going to refer to as the chief judicial commissioner. I don't know if that's the correct title or not, but raise that pay up to 68.5 from where it currently stands. So this is the budget that is uh, this is the amendment that's necessary to bring that up to where they requested. Second. Okay, we have a motion and a second. Any questions? Is this the new person? Correct. New person that the director. Yes. Did the director with a highly qualified. She's a lawyer plus. Did this person not know what the salary was when they took the job? This is the one that we offered her this salary when we offered her the job. She didn't ask for this. We offered. We had. I think we had another resolution. William might explain that early. Mayor, hang on one second, Commissioner Glover. Sorry. William, you want to explain that, or you want me to explain it? Commissioner Glover, if you could just speak to the uh, amendment here and how the salary got raised. Yeah, we 
brought it before the full commission, uh, I guess a few months ago, to, we, we raised the requirements, education requirements, um, from where it was at, and the commission voted to to give a little leeway from 58 to 75,000. Because of this person's education and experience, uh, we offered her 68 to five, and uh, that's where we stand right now. And we, the person that we have, uh, she's got a law degree. Uh, she's she's had her own practice. She's uh, worked in both private and public. And I believe we got a we got a steal at being able to get her in here to turn the department around, and also lead the department uh, towards greatness. Okay. There's a motion and a second to uh, approve. Any further comments? All in favor say aye. 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 That's unanimous. Uh, the next one is uh, the PEG channel needs a, a direct fiber line running from this building over to the uh, what was formerly the Baptist building uh, in order to improve some of the delays that you guys have uh, heard about in the in the broadcast so they're asking for a thousand dollars addition to run fiber uh, basically from this building over there to uh, to improve the quality of the broadcast motion to approve yeah we have a motion and a second from Annette um, any further comments all in favor say aye. 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 And that's unanimous as well. Uh, the next one comes from the planning department. Um, I talked to Tom uh, and he's running short in his legal notices line, which anytime you know he does a public meeting or uh, all kinds of things he does, he has to, uh, to put a public notice in the newspaper. Uh, he did not feel that he had another area in his budget to take this money from, so he is requesting. Second. We have a motion and a second to approve the uh, line item transfer. Uh, any further comments, questions? All in favor say aye. 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 Uh, the next one in uh, stormwater, uh, it is uh, to move money again out of travel, which is clearly not being used over into maintenance repair of vehicles. Uh, that is to pay a deductible where they hit a deer. Motion to approve. Have a motion and have a motion and a second. Um, Annette has her hand up. Yeah. Deductible. There was there was a um, a deer that ran out in front of one of the cars trucks. Excuse me. Thank you. Yes, ma'am. Okay. Any other questions? All in favor of approving, say aye. 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 That's you know. Uh, Stormwater has also requested a new vehicle. This is the amount off state bid for what they are requesting. Uh, so they are taking this out of the Stormwater Reserve account. So it's not coming out of the regular general fund fund balance. It's coming out of the Stormwater Reserve. What kind of vehicle is it, Aaron? You know, uh, I'm sorry, Tommy. I'm, I know it's a truck, but the specifics uh, I don't know. She got he sent that information over to Lebronia after the Urban Type Board meeting. Do you remember him saying what kind of truck it was? I don't remember him saying specifically. He said it at the Road Commission. Do you remember? I don't. I just remember him saying he bought it off state bid. Off the of state bid, but I don't remember the not. I don't of remember truck. the specifics of the kind of truck. Okay, is there a motion to approve? Motion. I have a motion and a second by Annette. Annette, you have a question, your hand's still up. I don't know how to take it down. Okay. 
That's a great answer. Okay, we have a motion and a second. Any other questions? All in favor say aye. 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 That's good. Mr. Tommy, I'll get you the dimension, uh, get to the deal on what the truck is. Yeah, because that's too late now. I remember. <laughs> so, at least you'll know. Uh, the next one is uh, appropriate funds for purchase uh, of land for Wema stations and appraisals on those properties. Uh, so it's 150000 Second. Okay, there's, there was a second, but was there a motion? motion. <laughs> okay. We have a motion by Tommy and second by William. All in favor say aye. 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 Any opposed? Okay. And the last one is uh, <laughs> okay. uh, the last one is four hundred and ninety four thousand uh, dollars to appropriate funds for the new fire truck for the new uh, Mount Juliet Wema station. Motion. And we do have a motion and a second to approve. Okay, any further discussion or comments? All in favor of approving, say aye. 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 And that's 100%. If I may, uh, I don't know if we're completely finished or not, but I, if I can explain to you why I brought Clear Glove to you tonight, and I asked him to keep it short, so you saw a very, uh, you saw a very abbreviated version of what that does, uh, because I didn't want you to be here a real long time. The deal is, is that our budget process, unless we otherwise adopt a different budget, budget schedule, which the mayor and I will be discussing, I'm sure, uh, work starts February 1. Uh, if we're going to do this, uh, then we need to move on it in a fairly short time. That doesn't mean you have to move on it this month. I will tell you that they are building it, but it is pending, just, uh, just like when the mayor signed a contract for real estate, they're building it, uh, but it is pending county commission approval as to whether or not, so that we're not obligated on the contract. They're working on it, but we don't have to take it. So, Aaron, is this an all-inclusive type piece of software, or can we pick and choose what we you purchase? Can pick and choose what you want. Um, there's uh, every piece of it is has really positive things about it. What I like the most about it is, number one, it, it takes us out of the world of Excel where uh, if you add a row or a, you add a, a new uh, department, uh, you, you got to, you know, be very careful that you don't uh, forget to include that in your totals. Uh, you know, uh, it, it streamlines a lot of things. It also integrates with our accounting package, as he mentioned, so that basically if you link that budget document on our website, when you pull the budget document or a citizen pulls the budget document, they're looking at the latest version of the budget, not the one that we passed back in June that was obsolete by the end of August because it had already been changed. Uh, it provides a tremendous amount of information and you guys are in charge of the budget. That's why I'm, I'm bringing it to you and not to the finance committee first. So you may say, you know what, you should probably take it to the finance committee and let them look at it, and I'm good with that. Uh, I just wanted you to know, since it is time for us to start adopting our budget, if we're going to make a switch, now is the time that we probably need to do that. But it doesn't mean tonight. I just need you to, do, to think about it and make a decision on whether it's something you want to do or not. Yes, sir. Are there any uh, grant money out there, especially for the startup for the first year, from like some of the open government sources that would give us part of the money to fund it for the first year? You know, I have not seen any such grants, Commissioner Glover. Uh, I'll be more than happy to see if I can find anything that will apply. Uh, I can also, uh, I've not brought other departments in to, to look at it. I can also see, like we did on Skyward, if I can get some participation from other departments, we were very fortunate there and that some other departments were willing to carry part of the cost. So uh, that is also a possibility. Would this replace anything? Uh, Are there any, any way to use parts of what maybe and also the uh, our waste funds for parts of part of this? Is it be, be used by the public to be there as their accounts also? 
the public would be able to see as much as we want them to. Uh, to. In other words, uh, to the point of being able to drill down on what the actual expenditures were, if that's what we choose to share. He was asking, I think, could they share in the cost? A a a a a the road commission can definitely share in the cost. Uh, last time the sheriff department shared in the cost, I have not had uh, neither. I have not sat down with either one of them and gone through it. Uh, and the reason is because we're sort of late in the game. Once we start doing the budget, we probably don't want to switch midstream. We probably want to put it off a year or put it off indefinitely. You know, once we once we start doing it, then we probably want to continue with however we start. Aaron, yes, I knew he, he said it was thirty-five grand annually. Is that? Uh, Renewable annually, or do we start off with a five-year contract, ten-year contract, two-year contract? Uh, annual, annual renewal. Annual renewal. <clears throat> and again, I'm not asking you. I threw this at you tonight, and you saw a very abbreviated version. I'm not asking you to vote on it tonight. I'm just explaining why I brought it tonight. Because if we're going to do it, we have to do it fairly quickly, or we have to say no. Let's move on with the way we've historically done it, and we'll look at it again next year. So. Hey Aaron, real quick, um, is there any other counties that's using that program? City of Murfreesboro uh, has is on board. Um, they have a lot of counties, um, but they don't have. They are just now moving into the Tennessee market, uh, so uh, they have a few cities. The biggest one that I know of is Murfreesboro, but as far as I know, they don't have any counties yet. And this will help you in your office, uh, I guess the speed of putting it together the budget the speed the uh, the flexibility of the budget document in terms of again you as a commissioner uh, the public when they're looking at a budget document they're going to be looking at the budget as it currently exists today not the budget as it existed back in June when it was adopted yes sir does this interface with say your payroll area it interfaces completely with Skyward uh, so that those budget amendments that get posted to Skyward get uploaded then to ClearGov and also as he mentioned briefly in his presentation I don't know if you could hear or not but you also get a running total of budget to actual expenditures so all the pay going out would be deducted or be on there as an app mm -hmm. you get a you get a clear complete view of what's what's taking place the same thing say for the road commission if it were every department if we went to this for a budget platform every department would operate for everything from needs request everything from the point what happens now just real brief in excel we create budget worksheets not, not excel excuse me in skyward we create budget worksheets we uh, allow people out in the departments to modify those budget worksheets as status quo comes back to us those status quo budgets are approved by the budget committee then input into Excel the departments all list uh, write out needs request on Word or Excel or whatever they use to write them out they come into us we bring them to the budget committee they decide, decide what needs we then go back and modify our Excel document modify Skyward up to the point that you guys finally vote and adopt a final budget, those things are, are changing. Uh, this budget, this program will also, he didn't get into it, it will also allow you to save multiple versions of a budget. So if you called me and asked me, what if we gave employees a 2% raise? I can run a 2% raise analysis with the click of a button. And uh, so. Now, could this interface with all, we all have computers now. Mm -hmm issued we set say in the meetings budget committee or whoever and as we're doing the budget and say somebody comes in you say okay the status quo budget and we could get it on our own computers you absolutely you could. read access yes I mean, we wouldn't have write access of course right you would absolutely you would absolutely have read access and yes. then maybe the chairman of the budget committee might have write access when they vote on I'm something sorry, what was the question? yeah Mr. Gentry, if you could talk into the mic, they cannot hear you at home. I'm sorry. I was asking if there's interface, first of all, between the payroll and the system, and also with our new computers that everyone has, 
would they be useful, say, in the meetings or even in the commission as we're looking at the budget in each section of the budget? And if a decision was made or a vote was made, say, to increase, like Aaron said, 2% increase, and say teacher raises, we could put that in right there to see what it looks like. This thing will also show you in chart and graph form. The last thing I'm going to say, we've been here quite a while. It'll show you in chart and graph form stuff that you guys are used to hearing, but the general public is not. What is my call volume with Weeman? What's my call volume with the Sheriff's Department? What type of calls? If we put that information in there, it will put that information out in a format that's understandable to the public in terms of what the county is actually doing. I want to ask a question, please. Yes, ma'am. Or you just totally cut it off. Uh, <coughs> the 35000 that no, is the total for this. Annual. Now, yeah, the annual total. Uh, as all these things are added, more and more departments, will this cost more or no. is this a set figure, the 35000 this, this is a set <coughs> fee. Now, I can't tell you, uh, as the, is the case with anything we buy, you know, I can't tell you that in 10 years they're going to continue to charge me $35,000. I don't, I I don't know that. that. But this is a, right now, this is a set fee. Yeah. Yes, ma'am. That was my question. Do you sign a one-year contract, two, three-year contract? Do you know yet as far as that is? The, the, my understanding right now is this would be an annual contract. I, I, not a, I understand that, but you yeah. signed then an annual contract. I mean, we could, if we if we wanted to, I'm sure they would be more than more than willing to enter into a three to five year agreement. Okay. At, if we wanted to lock in, yeah, you know, if we I'm wanted right. to lock it in, absolutely, we could probably do that for at least five years. Yeah. Okay. That's what I was going. To. Commissioner Glover had a question. Commissioner Glover. Hey, can you hear me? Yes, yes sir. sir. Uh, is there a contract you have to sign for so many years, or is this a year by year? You may have already covered it. I just I can't hear hardly anything. Yeah. It, can you hear me okay? I'm taking that as a no. He can hear you. Can you hear can you hear me, Commissioner Glover? I heard no. I didn't hear anything before or after. Okay. Can you but you can hear me now, right? It's, it's kind of breaking in and out. Okay. Okay. Yeah, it is annual. If you can hear me, Commissioner Glover, uh, it's a, it is uh, right now. Right now, it'd be a one year. I'm sure we could we could enter into a three or a five if we wanted to. Uh, I don't know why we wouldn't. If you if you wanted to go that route, I don't know why we wouldn't go with a three or a five year deal. But okay, just just a question for my folks at home. Uh, I know Commissioner Glover said he didn't hear well. I've heard that from Commissioner Stafford. Uh, can the rest of you speak? Can y'all hear me well? Because we can hear well in here. Can anyone answer me? Commissioner Kurtz, Commissioner Breeze, Commissioner Bernard? Mayor? Yes. Can you hear? I can, um, I can hear you okay, but I can't hear anybody else. Okay. Like I couldn't hear and understand what Aaron was saying a moment ago. Okay. Well, Thank you. We can you. understand you. Okay. But I don't think we can understand anybody else as they speak. We can't hear the gallery or understand the gallery. Got you. Okay. All right. Thank you. Just wanted some feedback. I do have one thing to add, if I can. If you don't, if you'll just give me two minutes. Yeah, go ahead. I, I've got one also. Okay. J just so we we pass the the uh, budget amendments tonight for the fire stations in Mount Juliet. Just to make some clarity on some of those, because you may hear discussion as we go on about that. Um, the one on Clemens Road, uh, it will be known as Station 12. Uh, it is a three-bay station. It will be equipped with the people and the personnel that's in Station 3 right now. As a matter of fact, it's a rock throw from Station 3. And some of you may say, how did we pick these stations? Uh, Director Cooper showed up in my office with heat maps so he knew where the most of the calls were. Uh, this one is still in the city limits. Uh, it is not out of the city limits. And you know, the goal for us was to make sure that we put an ambulance, a fire station with an ambulance in it. We didn't want to hurt ourselves on trying to make the calls in the city with the ambulance, but yet we wanted to be better at making the fire coverage out in the county. And so that's what we did there. 
I did tell you, the Public Works Committee, and many of them are here tonight, that I would get the appraisals. So I wanted you to know what that was too because I did get those today. The Clemens Road, you paid $100,000. That was a part of that $153,000 budget amendment that you did, not, that you did tonight. The value of that property is $262,500. Um, I think that was important to know that part. Let me go to station, um, the second station that's on Central Pike. It's called Wema Station 14. It will be a four bay station. Uh, it has three parcels that are coming together to make one parcel for us, okay? It will have to go through planning. Um, you are, the two people and the ambulance is in the Belinda City station right now at Mount Jude. It will just move over on the other side of Providence, really, uh, in this station. This station, you may hear, it's in the county. Well, it's separated by a 25-foot road that's in the county because across the street is in the city, okay? So you still have good access exactly uh, um, for, for accuracy. Commissioner Smith drove both of these here uh, just yesterday because there was conversation about are we, and I think the post put out, uh, the post said that we were cutting ties with Mount Jude. Uh, not true there. Uh, we're just relocating where we are. Uh, and so we're still in the city uh, or in good position. We're not diminishing any ambulance coverage at all in Mount Jude. You still have two ambulances there. You still have two ambulances a day. You may say, how many ambulances do we have in Lebanon? You have two ambulances in Lebanon as well. We all have a supporting cast around us, but that is what we have. Now, what you did do that we've had several good comments about is you added and you approved tonight the fire truck to go down there in the south station on Central Pike. And at budget time, as it rolls around, as Aaron was just talking about, you'll have the opportunity to put uh, two men per shift, that's six total, uh, in that uh, station with that. Uh, that appraisal for that property, you actually paid 50000 to one person. The rest of the people donated their property. I would love to give them a tax write-off letter. That property there valued at $246,000, $246,500. So um, both of those appraisals are in. Uh, we also approved, uh, and I'm, I'm assuming, do I need to bring this up or not? Public Works said, hey, you know, I give them the, I ask them, do we take this money, 153, out of uh, capital projects, or do we take it out of the bond? We said in that meeting in Public Works to take it out of the bond, that we could go ahead and pay it now out of capital projects and backfill it with a bond coming in. I'm assuming, does that need to be discussed or not, or no, that's an okay. We just did a resolution on that. Okay, so we did a resolution, and that's what that was? Okay. Didn't we okay. do one for 153,000? Yeah. Okay. Yeah, that was the 153,000. Yeah. Gotcha. Out of capital projects. So we will pay these bills now and backfill them when the bond comes in. And just people asked me last month, so I want to be sure you knew that too. Uh, the actual bond rating call will be this Tuesday, coming Tuesday at 1 o'clock. Uh, you will have uh, uh, the uh, projected bond sale for that bond on January the 26th. We'll actually have the closing and get our money by February the 17th uh, is what is projected as of today. Um, any questions about those stations? Just I just wanted to make sure that we were clear on that in case you were asking any questions coming forward. Yeah, the only, the only, the only thing on? I'll add is that y'all have talked about the money and done all this stuff with prices, but we've never actually approved the contracts. Public Works approved those the other night. I've already done the resolution. Y'all want to put your name on that that you approved it? Now's the time to do it, otherwise it'll just come out of Public Works. That's pretty much what they do. So the contracts have been prepared for the land. They have been approved by Mayor Jennings. They have been approved by Public Works. And if you would like to approve those now to be a part of that, you're welcome to do that. Is that what I understand? Yeah. So I, I, I'll make that motion, if I can, then to approve those contracts that have been previously approved by Public Works to move forward with those. Second. Okay, we have a motion and a second to, um, to approve the contract that's already been put in place. All in favor say aye. Aye. Ah. And I'll add one more thing. I, I, I got this conversation of the night and when I, when I text you guys and somebody hit me back and said, hey, have you thought about the uh, tornado sirens that got tore down by the, uh, 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 Wema, the uh, 
two schools that blew away. And it was so cold, I really just kind of let that go here. As I was informed a little bit later on, that is a serious issue. Uh, and so Director Cooper and them and uh, Marty Heckman, they're on that. They should be up and installed. We're thinking middle of February or towards the end. That, that was, we're under the mercy of that company that's going to come do it. But that is on its way. And, and that is a serious concern for a lot of people today since we've been through this. Commissioner Smith? Is that going to be the same location, Mr. Chairman? To my understanding, same location, Commissioner Cooper, Director Cooper? Well, the, the location of it right now is right where the school is at. Okay. So we're going to move it back to the bus shop that is still up and going right now. Plus, uh, the access to it will be a whole lot better uh, instead of waiting until they do something with the school. So you're only moving it probably however far it is, uh, actually between the two schools at Thank the bus you. shop. Thank you, Director. Okay. And I will, I'll, I'll shut up now, uh, but I will say that I'll try to get you kind of an update. I gave it to Public Works the other day about kind of how the jail's going and the timeline there. So I'll try to get that put together and send it out to everybody. So just so you'll know, because I know people have asked the question. But thanks for uh, allowing me to talk. Yeah, I have one other thing. Um, Mike, could you give us a uh, update on the West Wilson Stoner Creek situation? And if there's any barriers that we need to know about? It'll be a very general update, uh, Mr. Marlowe. I got into this thing on December 14th. Even though know the schools got blown down March 3rd. Exactly. And so I'm having to bring myself up to speed. There are thousands of pages of documents there. I will say this, that I believe that this can be resolved. I now believe this can be resolved more easily than I thought a month ago. Now, we're not there yet. But we're going to push on that pretty quick because we need to get those schools and get them out of there. Yeah. So uh, there's still some money to do, I will tell you. I'm not going to be any more particular than that because I've been hit by the press today, I've been hit by the press just about every day. And I promise them that I'm not going to tell them anything specific until I have a check to share with more business. And hopefully we'll have a either a special meeting late next week or early the next to map out a plan of, of that. Okay. I, I will say, uh, Commissioner Marlowe, I, while I talked about preparing for litigation, I'm very optimistic that won't be necessary. Yeah, sounds good. Okay, is there any uh, new business? One other motion? Motion to adjourn. Second. Thank you very much.